All right, so today I've got three new Warner Archive Blu-ray releases to talk to you about. Those are The Courtship of Eddie's Father, Safe in Hell, and The Strawberry Blonde. I watched all these. I'm going to tell you what they're about, if I recommend them. And I've got some feelings about where Warner Archive is as a Blu-ray label right now, so stay tuned. Now, what's going on, my friends? Welcome again to the Cobwebs channel, where we're dusting off the classics. My name is Daniel. And uh, now, if you remember recently on the channel, if you're a frequent viewer, I went through a period where I was reviewing the new Warner Archive Blu-ray releases timely as they were coming out. And I stopped doing that. And if you're wondering why, Honestly, it became too pricey. I came to the conclusion that Warner Archive Blu-rays are not worth brand new prices. I'm being honest with you guys. If you get a brand new Warner Archive Blu-ray release, you're gonna be paying $19.99 or even $21.99. Warner Archive Blu-rays have very basic packaging, no slip cover, no booklets inside or anything like that. They're fairly minimal on special features. I just don't think these are worth $20. And I built up my Warner Archive Blu-ray collection. I fell in love with them as a label because of their four for 44 sales. Do you guys remember those? If you were around with Blu-ray collecting uh, a year or two ago, Warner Archive would regularly have four Blu-rays for $44. Great sales. And that's $11 a piece. That's that's the kind of price that this stuff is really worth. And I thought that was fantastic. And that's long gone. So now I have found if you wait two, especially three months to pick these up, the price will go down significantly. And that is what I recommend doing. I really don't recommend picking these up right away. This is a May release. I bought it for $17.99. These are April releases. I got them for about 14 bucks. So it's really three months that's really the sweet spot if you can wait to get these for a reasonable price. But I'm also feeling a little bit of burnout with the kinds of movies that they're releasing right now. But more on that in a bit. Because first, I wanna to talk to you about my favorite of these. And that's the most recent release. That is the Courtship of Eddie's Father. I picked these up. I think I told you guys about this several times because I love 1960s comedies. I love comedies with that 60s look, that 60s feel with those actors that regularly played in 1960s movies. I just love them. And this is one that's starring Glenn Ford, who I'm a huge fan of, uh, Shirley Jones, who I like from The Music Man, and Ron Howard, who went on to become a great director. I'm not particularly a big fan of him as a child. But what this is about is Glenn Ford and his son, Ron Howard, um, and they're dealing with the loss of the wife and mother of their family. And I kind of thought this was going to be a comedy, and it's a little bit less comedy and more slice of life movie about them dealing with this loss, trying to move on. And I thought that it dealt with it in a very adult and uh, an and interesting, intelligent way, because I thought this is the kind of story that's regularly on TV in this time, uh, but this isn't the sitcom version. This is the movie version where they can get a little bit more real with things, and I appreciated that. Uh, the kid is really weird. He talks a lot about like hating himself, and he talks about women's bus sizes, a lot of weird conversations with this kid, which kind of I guess kept it entertaining. Um, like the, the, now the tagline of the movie says, every boy needs a mother, even if dad has to marry her. And it seems like he's trying to decide between these three women. It's not really what the movie is. Not really at all. Um, it, it really is a slice of life movie about these people. And yes, him trying to find love. And, uh, and that's, that's kind of the movie. It's directed by Vincent Minnelli. It's almost two hours long, maybe a little bit too long. But I liked it. I thought it had a great cast. Stella Stevens, uh, who is uh, this one right here. Um, Stella Stevens, I think, is so underrated as an actress. And I thought she was maybe the standout, the comedic standout, at least, of this movie. Uh, it has a beautiful look to it. I, I enjoyed the movie. It's not great. I gave it a three and a half out of five but I enjoyed it. For special features, it's actually got a commentary, which is rare for an old movie from Warner Archive, commentary with Shirley Jones, Stella Stevens, and Dina Merrill. It's also got a vintage cartoon, it's a Tom and Jerry cartoon, and a theatrical trailer. Next up is Safe in Hell from 1931, a pre-code movie that's kind of notorious and I had heard about before and I was really interested in seeing, so I was excited when Warner Archive announced it. Uh, it's, it's about this woman played by Dorothy McHale, who's an actress I wasn't very familiar with, and she's a prostitute and she goes to a job and she gets in a fight with the customer and accidentally kills him and sets the building on fire in order to cover it up. Now, she doesn't cover it up very well because the police are still after her. And uh, around this time, her boyfriend comes back into town who had been away for a long time at sea because he's a sailor. And she at first tries to push him away because she's after the cops are after her. Uh, but then she's honest with him and he helps her escape 
to get to an island that he knows about. And on this island, uh, it's some kind of safe haven for criminals. No governments are able to go there and arrest anybody. Uh, so he takes her there so that she can be safe in hell. Because on the island, they refer to this place as hell. And I knew that about this movie. I knew that was the premise. And I really did think she's going to hell. And I thought it's going to be some kind of supernatural horror kind of thing. It's not that. It's just an island. Uh, it's just an island. And she goes there and she interacts with some criminals. And, um, and she, a lot of it has to do with, you know, her trying to avoid being assaulted by these criminals. And it's not very fun to watch, honestly. Like, I wasn't a big fan of it. It's interesting for a historical context because um, because it's a pre-code movie where they deal with really dark, really adult themes. And I respect that. But the story is just not very interesting here. There's just not enough going on. I thought it has a few standout scenes. I thought the ending was pretty impactful. It went in a way that I wasn't expecting. But um, I just didn't find it to be a great movie. And I'm feeling, I'm going to be honest with you guys. And here's, here's, where, we, here's where it's going to go down. <laughs> I'm feeling some burnout with Warner Archive right now. I'm feeling about them in a similar way that I felt about Vinegar Syndrome like a couple of years ago, where I was getting a lot of blind buys and just getting burned a lot in some bad movies. With Warner Archive, I'm not getting burned by bad movies, but just a lot of okay movies. I don't feel a lot of faith in their programming ability, in their curation ability. And I'm sure other people disagree. Maybe you love Safe in Hell. I saw some really high ratings for it on Letterboxd. And, um, but I feel like for my taste... I'm getting a lot of mediocre stuff. And I miss when they released movies with a greater variety of time period. Like, I love old movies. I love stuff from the 30s through the 90s. That's like my sweet spot. And that used to be Warner Archives thing. They would release movies generally from the 30s through the 90s. They only released the, the really old classic film stuff, obscure stuff. And I miss when they would release something like Pump Up the Volume. I remember this was really exciting when they put this out. I miss those days. But even if they want to put out uh, just really old stuff, Where's the exciting stuff? Where's Captain Blood, right? Where's Gentleman Jim? Uh, where's some just really exciting old classic movies that are not getting released on Blu-ray? I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel like they're just going for real obscure stuff, and that's fine. But, like, there's some classics they could be doing. There's some, there's some, and I'm feeling a little frustration with them, to be honest with you. Uh, let's go to the third movie, and that's Strawberry Blonde. Um, disappointed with this movie, I'll be honest. I got it because it's a romantic comedy. Uh, starring an amazing cast. It's got Jimmy Cagney, Olivia de Havilland, Rita Hayworth, Jack Carson, Alan Hale. Amazing cast. Now, it takes place at the turn of the century, right around 1900. And even though the movie came out in 1941, it was directed by Raoul Walsh. Now, it's not just a period piece. I would say it is a full on nostalgia piece. It is so obsessed with being nostalgic and romanticizing the 1900 era. It's full of music from that period. Uh, not recordings, of course, but people singing those songs. It's not a musical, just like, you know, musicians in the movie and stuff like that. Uh, so it's really obsessed with extreme romanticization of this era. It's about Jimmy Cagney, who's kind of a hot-headed, not-so-bright guy, a pretty typical role for Jimmy Cagney, uh, who's in love with Rita Hayworth. She's not such a good person, and she wants to be with Jack Carson. And he kind of ends up with Olivia de Havilland, a little bit against his will. But it's about his character arc of his time over many years, um, falling in love with her slowly over time, and, uh, and having some legal trouble because Jack Carson kind of screwing him over. And the movie tells you all of that at the beginning, because it's flashback. So at the beginning of the movie, they tell you pretty much everything. And then it goes into flashbacks and you see the movie. So there's no surprises. And it is... And it's a comedy that I didn't think was funny. Um, a, a lot of the comedy comes from Olivia de Havilland's character. At the beginning of the movie, she is a suffragette. Keep in mind, it's 1900. She really believes women should be able to vote. Women should be able to be in the workforce, blah, blah, blah. And she's really treated as a joke for this, which is weird because it came out in 1941. Women during this time period, like they're voting, they're going to work, they're covering for men who are off at war. Like what a weird stance to take in 1941. And also when Jimmy Cagney does kind of fall for her and wants her to be his girl, um, he's like, now no more of that, that women's liberation stuff. You knock that off. And she's like, okay, great. I'm happy about it. And I'm like, ah, okay, whatever. But like the it's weird to say the politics of it, the ancient, ancient politics of that aside, 
everything interesting about her character dies at that point because she drops all of that and that's like all her character had and then she's kind of boring. Rita Hayworth isn't very entertaining in the movie. I'm a fan of her. Um, Jack Carson, I think he's always entertaining. It's got some fun performances. It's just a movie that tells you everything that happens right from the start. Then you watch it play out and it's not that funny. So that's kind of the deal with these. Um, like I said, I'm feeling a little bit of Warner Archive burnout, but I want to know, are you still a fan of Warner Archive? Are you picking up their new releases? Because I don't see a lot of people talking about them. So I wonder, do people still care? Am I one of the last holdouts who's trying to hold on to Warner Archive? I don't know, but I am interested. Let me know down in the comments below your thoughts. Have you seen these, these movies? Do you like them more than me? Like I said, like I really like The Courtship of Eddie's Father. I was not such a big fan of these. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this, I would appreciate you dust off that like button because it really does help out the channel. And give a subscribe if you want more videos like this. I like to talk about old movies, generally like from 30s to the 90s. That's my sweet spot. Love old stuff. Love film history. Love physical media. Thank you so much, everybody. Without further ado, don't forget to have a good time today. Go have some fun. I'll see you later.